Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a rational, ex rational equation. Sorry. Um, now, a little bit different in solving rational equations, compared to like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, you know, a lot of times when we were doing those, the first thing we always did is you know, simplify, and then we went ahead and applied whatever operation we needed to. In, this, in these examples, basically, when we're solving a rational ex um, e equation, you can see that I have variables in the denominator. And we can't solve an equation when we have our variables in the denominator. So in this case, basically, what we're going to want to do is eliminate the variables in the denominator. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply every single one of our expressions by the LCM, or the LCD, which is the least common denominator. So basically, in this example here, um, you want to make sure that each one of your expressions here is written as a fraction. And then you look at them and say, all right, what is the smallest term, expression, number, whatever it may be, that is going to evenly divide into 7 and the, or that 7 and x evenly divide into? Well, in this case, my LCD is going to equal 7x. Because 7 divides into 7x 7 times, x divides into 7x 7 times. Um, and obviously, 1 divides into there. So what you do is you basically take your LC, LCD and you multiply it by your whole equation. And as long as you're multiplying at your whole equation, you're producing equivalent equations. Let me just give you an example here real quick. If I had 2x plus 4 equals um, 5, hopefully you guys understand that. Eh, let's do 6. Um, hopefully you guys understand that this answer is x equals 1. right? Subtract 4, and then is 2, and then divide by 2. So if I, if I multiplied this by 2, I would get 4x plus 8 equals 12. Well, if I go ahead and solve that equation, my answer, my solution is still 1. All right? So as long as you multiply your whole equation, every single term, by a multiplier, you're producing equivalent equations. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, when I multiply each one of these, it's going to look something like this. So it's going to look like, now remember, I'm multiplying. That's in the numerator. So it's going to be 7x times 3 over 7. And then we have plus, we're going to do 7x times 8 over x, and then is equal to 7x times 1 over 1. Now, a lot of times we like to write the 7x here. I can use parentheses to go ahead and represent that. All right. So now we're going to basically use our division property. And if you remember real quick, the division property basically states if I have 7 divided by 7, that's 1. If I have x divided by x, that's also equal to 1. Okay. So here you can see that my 7s divide out to give me 1, which is just going to leave me with the expression 3x. Here, my x's divide to 1, which I'm just left with 7 times 8, which is 56. And here, 7x times 1 over 1 is just going to be 7x. Now, to go ahead and solve this, I basically want to get my variables on the same side. So I'm going to have to subtract a 3x on both sides. And I have 56 is equal to 4x. Now, I divide by 4, divide by 4, and I have x equals uh, 56 going to 40, 10, so it'd be 14 times. Now, whenever you're solving a um, rational equation, you always want to make sure you can go back and plug in your solution back into your equation to make sure that it works. And basically, when you go ahead and plug in 14, you could go and check your solutions here. Um, but basically, I want to make sure that it's not going to make my denominator 0. Well, plugging 14 in for x is not going to make it 0, so therefore that works. All right, so now let's go and get into the next example. Um, in this example here, we need to, again, determine what our LCD is. So in this example, you can see I have the same denominator, x minus 1 and x minus 1, and then I have 2. So in this example, I'm going to say my LCD, actually, let's use a different one here. Let's use red. If I have a red, I thought I had a red. Here's a red. So in this example, my LCD is going to be x minus 1. Yep, let's write 2 at first. 2 times x minus 1. Now again, why is this my uh, common denominator? Well, because 2 divides into 2 times x minus 1, x minus 1 times. x minus 1 divides into 2 times x minus 1, 2 times. And you can see that each, each time you divide that, the division property would um, apply. So rather than do another step, because I don't want to run out of space, I'm going to multiply every term by our LCD. So I'm going to do 2x 
2 times x minus 1, 2 times x minus 1, and 2 times x minus 1. Okay, Because remember, you're multiplying that term, again, is in the numerator. Well, here you can see that 2, we know that 2 divides into it. It goes into their x minus 1 time. Division property applies. Here, my x minus 1 divides into x minus 1 2 times. And here, it divides into their x minus 1. So now, what I'm left with is 3 times x minus 1 plus 4 times 2 is going to be 8 equals, and then I have x plus 1 times 2. But instead of writing x plus 1 times 2, we always like to write that number in front. All right, so now I need to apply a little dis division or distributive property. So therefore, I have 3x minus 3 plus 8 equals 2x plus 2. Now I need to simplify and simplify combined like terms here. So I have 3x plus 5 equals 2x plus 2. Now I just need to get the variables to the same side and go ahead and solve. So I'll subtract 2x here on both sides. Now I have x plus 5 equals 2. Go ahead and subtract my 5, subtract my 5. x equals a negative 3. Again, make sure you can plug back negative 3 into your original equation. Make sure it doesn't make any denominator equal 0. You could obviously go ahead and check to make sure it still is a product, um, product of there. But um, that should be able to make it work. It doesn't make the denominator 0, so that's going to be our solution. All right, um, over in this example here, uh, what you can see is now my LCD is going to be 2x times x plus 1. So I'll do that again in red over here. So for this one, my LCD is, uh, write 2x first. So that's going to be 2x times x plus 1. So again, I'm going to have to multiply every term times 2x times x plus 1. Like I showed here, you've got to apply your distributive property. So that's going to be 2x times x plus 1, and then 2x times x plus 1. All right, so now we just go ahead and use our division property. Here you can see x plus 1. Obviously, we know x plus 1 divides into there, and that divides into there 2x times. So therefore, um, 2x times 3x is going to be 6x squared. Over here, um, going ahead, my 2x's are now going to divide out. So I'm going to have a minus uh, 5x minus 5. I'm applying distributive property. That's a negative 5. So it's negative 5 times x, which is negative 5x, and negative 5 times 1. I basically am applying distributive property. I'm just trying to move it along a little bit. Here, the 2x divides out. Again, I need to apply distributive property here. So that's going to equal a 3x plus 3. All right, so now we have a little bit of a different situation. Now you can see we have a quadratic. So unlike in this example, where basically we just went ahead and you know, combined the like terms to solve, here we have a quadratic. And remember, solving quadratics, um, we want to make sure we set our quadratic equal to 0 and then look to solve either by factoring or quadratic formula. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to subtract a 3x. So I have 6x squared. Um, minus 8x minus 5 equals 3. And then I'll basically subtract 3. Subtract 3, and I get 6x squared minus 8x plus oops, minus 8 equals 0. Now, whenever you go ahead into factoring, um, you always want to see if you can factor out a GCF. And you can see here, I can factor out a 2. So in factoring out a 2 here, I'm left with a 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Well, I can divide that 2 out. So now I'm just left with, um, that goes to 0. So now I'm just left with the quadratic equation, 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Well, I need to solve these, va these factors, right? So again, if we're going to factor this, I'm going to first look to factor. I know that my two factors here have to be x and 3x. Now I just need to determine, well, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 4? Well, it's either going to be 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. So it's either going to be you know, 4 and 1 or 1 and 4. Or my other example could be 3x and 2 and 2. So now basically what we need to do is when we multiply, we know that one of these has to be negative. Either it's the 4 or the 1, either way. All right. 
um, or the 2. One of them has to be negative. For them to multiply to give me negative 4. But what I want to determine is which one, when I multiply my middle terms, the, the inner and the outer, which ones, when I multiply them, is going to give me a negative 4x. So you know, if you're kind of stuck, what I would basically do is just pick. Just first do this positive, this positive, that negative, and that negative. And let's check it out. That would give you 4x. That would give you negative 3x. That's not going to give you 4x. Um, that negative 4x. That would give you x. That would give you negative 12x. That's going to not going to give you negative 4x. So now let's go ahead and switch the signs. See if that helps. So 3x time, or so that gives you negative 4x. That gives you 3x. That doesn't give you doesn't work. That gives you negative x, positive 12x. That doesn't work. So therefore, now we just need to determine the 3x and the 2. And again, which one's positive, which one's negative? Well, let's just plug one in and see if it works. So this gives you positive 2x. This gives you negative 6x. Well, negative 6x plus positive 2x equals negative 4x. So guess what? My first guess worked. So now, remember, these are all equal to 0. Now I can just use the 0 prior property to say 3x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. Now, to solve for x, I can say x equals a negative 2 thirds and x equals a positive 2. Again, go back to my original equation and make sure by plugging in negative 2 thirds and 2 does not make any of my denominators equal to 0. It does not, so it looks like I'm in the clear. All right, in the last example here, you can see that the same denom the denominator or the common denominator is going to be x minus 2. Therefore, I'm going to kind of quickly get into this one, and I'm just going to multiply each and every term by my least common denominator, which is x minus 2. So I'd say my LCD is equal to x minus 2. So I'll multiply this by x minus 2, multiply this one by x minus 2, and multiply this by x minus 2. Well, obviously, by applying the division property, those divide out, and those divide out. So now I'm left with a linear equation, 5x equals 7 times x minus 2 plus 10. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and solve. So I applied a straight property here. So I get 5x equals 7x uh, minus 14 plus 10. I can combine my like terms. Um, so I get 5x equals 7x uh, minus 4. Now I can get my variables to the same side. So I'll subtract a 7x on both sides. Subtract 7x, and I get a negative 2x equals negative 4. Ah, there we go. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2 x equals positive 2. But remember, as I said, you've got to make sure you go back and check your answers, plug it back into your original equation. If, you're, if by plugging in your solution makes any of their denominators equal to 0, then it's, then it's not a solution. Well, if I plug 2 in for x minus 2, if I plug 2 in for x, I get 2 minus 2, which is 0. You cannot have your denominator equal to 0. So in this case, that is not a solution. Well, since that was my only solution, this equation has no solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a rational equation by checking your answers. Thanks.